Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Northside Plow with Pop One Podcast here again with Danny. He went out to where did we go? We went to Action TCG in Slidell. They had a huge case tournament for the new set. It was pretty cool. There was like 30, 30 players, I think. A lot of really good players, honestly. As a, I'll do a deck breakdown, kind of everything at the end of it. It was it was a really well run tournament. Will always does a good job out there with him. And yeah, him. definitely want to give a shout out to Action TCG. Always hold beautiful events. Uh, they're very welcoming. And we get to see a lot of the Louisiana guys whenever we go out there, and they're always a really cool crowd to be around. Yeah. So, they're yeah. a little too good, though. Uh, <laughs> I wish they wouldn't come as much, because then maybe I could actually, instead of getting third place, get a win finally. It's a nice uh, little crowd. Definitely if you want to get some good practice on a higher level, that's where you need to go. Yeah. And uh, So you went out there, and you got top four? Uh, I got third, so cool. it was top. It was five rounds and then top eight. Um, in top eight, I played the same person I played in round one, Nick. He's very good with mm-hmm. Cast Hero. And then top four played out. I played into Chase, who's a te- new team member of Team Pandemonium. Yep. Um, it was looking really good. I got game one in a minute and like minute and 15 seconds. Game two, he crushed me. And then game three, I was going first. I needed any Vanquish Soul Monster. And it was just fourth and third place. Nick and I played uh, Nick, sponsored by Action. Yep. And uh, we rolled for it because we were just ready to get out of there. And I had already played him in Swiss. Um, and we we know how that went since I was undefeated. <laughs> it was a good time. Alex also got top eight. Uh, so something cool about this deck is Alex and I played almost the same deck. Um, there's three cards different from the main and the side. We played different extra deck. As you'll see, the extra deck doesn't matter as much. And I'll talk about his reasonings behind why he played certain cards over me. Well, cool, man. I'm excited to see the deck. And uh, let's get right into it. Yeah, let's get into it. All right, guys. So we played Vanquish Soul. Again, Alex and I both played the same deck. The reason we play this deck is it feels like you always have a shot um, at playing. Um, you do need to see a specific card for it to feel better. But there were three games in total where I didn't see it. And I still won. So let's get down in the breakdown. This breakdown is very solved. This is what you should be playing currently without the new support. Um, so here's what it is. So we're looking at three Raisin, three Mad Love, three Borger, two Caesar Valius, one Pluton, and one Panthera. This is solved. Some people are playing um, two, only two of the Dr. Madlove, and I understand it. Some people, you know, you're not playing a whole lot of spells to search, but you need a normal summon for these tag outs so it works out. Panthera is like a level four, but it's not a normal summon technically. Um, and this card is just good for a spot removing back row as well as another searchable earth. And then Pluton, uh, you, none of this matters. Actually, none of this card text matters. It just says Vanquish Soul and it's a fire. That's the only thing that matters about it. Um, so that's the Vanquish Soul package. You shouldn't be playing any of any less of these currently. Um, in the deal. Um, then we've got a small little cast here package. It's two Fenrir, one Rise Heart. Shout outs to Joseph Ingram for letting me borrow these. So thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. <laughs> the deck actually needs it more than I thought that it did. Um, it is just so powerful. Like your your turn one ends on rock, like Borger Pass. But with this, it ends on rock, Borger, Fenrir Pass. And it's just. It sounds so silly, but that's deal breaker enough, as well as this is a very good going second card. And then this is just your searchable fire that's also an additional summon to start getting combos out for when you draw sub Uh Now we're gonna get into what I like about the deck, which is the fact that you can run an insane number of hand traps. So we're running three Ash, three Droll, two Valor. Um, and these are these are exactly what Alex and I played. The big difference in our hand traps is I played two D Shifter as well, um, whereas he played a Magnumut and a Baldrake. I, or not Baldrake, a whatever the other bestial is called. Um, so here in two bestials instead of this. In my opinion, the format or the matchups where bestials are good, this is better. And a lot of times this is just an auto blowout. And I wanted five auto win cards to give me like a 56% chance to auto win a matchup. And three drolls and two shifters does that. Now, what you'll notice though is shifter obviously conflicts with um, droll and valor. So if you have one of each of these and this you just keep this in your hand because these will be more impactful and this you can just always reveal and it's good off of small world um d shifter did very good for me all day alex hates this damn card uh i did watch a game where the bestials won because he needed the pressure so shout outs to him for that i just like this card because i like games that i can auto win and this deck very much so needs simplified game states to do well in you don't need your opponent's board to be empty you just need it to be suboptimal and then you're probably gonna win and that's what this card is. So now we're gonna get into the Divine Carnet and the Kaiju. Um, some people are playing two Kaiju, some people are playing two Divine Carnets. I like one and one simply because this is really good in the mirror match. It's really good in the cast here currently. It's really good in the certain matchups and the matchups where it's not, uh, you're only playing one of it. So you're usually fine. 
This card is insane. Um, and it's just a kaiju, right? But it's 1200 defense and fire, and that's what matters. So there's a lot of times where you can, you just go ahead and you give it to your opponent. You summon Dr. Mad Love, you reveal, you put it back in your hand, you get rid of another card on your opponent's, on your opponent's board, and then uh, when they start their turn, you just bounce it back. So you just clear so much with, you know, granted you have to reveal certain attributes, but with this two card combo, you just do so much. So it's very solid, I liked it. Um, you'll see in the side deck side patterns, even post side, there's still only one of this card because it's so searchable. It's just, this card is insane um, when it's good, but it's also bad when it's bad. Uh, consistency cards, three stake your soul, three small world. There's no pot of prosperities in here. There's too many times where you, you want to draw with um, Borger and you don't want to draw a pot of prosperity and cry. Some people actually, if you play less than three stake your soul, unless your excuse is you just don't own them, Please stop playing Yu-Gi-Oh! You are just incorrect. Um, Small World is insane because this card literally says uh, I am whatever you want me to be. It's including hand traps. There's been so many times where like, I do my full combo, I have good hands, and I'm like, okay, well, one Ash would probably just auto-win me the game, and then I just get the Ash, or get the Droll, or get whatever the hell I want. So this card is insane. Vanquish Soul cards, one and one. Um, you don't want a brick on these cards. Drawing them is usually bad. It's usually a death sentence. Um, so you just want the searchable ones. Uh, Alex and I actually debate on what to search first. I search continue almost always first. He searches Dust Devil almost always first. If I am playing under D Shifter, Dust Devil is what I grab over continue because this is turned off and this is on. Um, but that is the only time that I grab Dust Devil because it's usually just always more worth it to grab continue because of the column plays that you can do with raising then we're playing one rota it's rota there's zero explanation for that we're playing one durandal it's durandal um so this is where uh the one ofs that are really good run one harpies this is the 41st card um, i just wanted a card that didn't make me lose the back row and then one talents this is what's insane um every time i saw this card i auto won almost because of it it is just insane and you never want to draw the second one because sometimes they just brick and sometimes they don't do anything um, which is fine when you only have one of it it makes one dead card but if you have two you're just screwed now the last card that alex and i disagree on is i'm running a pot of desires he is running the second durandal that man hates this card i love this card um, because in my opinion um, if this card resolves, it's just Pot of Greed. The cards you were banishing, you quote, weren't seen anyways, so it didn't really matter. Um, if this card, if your hand is bad, like if you don't have a monster to summon and this card is in your hand, you lost anyway. So I might as well just see what the draw two is going to be, regardless of what I banished, because you're probably not playing the game anyways. Um, this card is usually used at the end of my full combo after I search everything that I want. Uh, but this card was insane for me all day. This card did, though, against Kashtira, almost screw me because I banished face down and um, his Shangri-La ended up blocking four of my zones, four of my monster zones. So I was in dangerous territory, honestly. Um, but, I, you know, I ended up pulling it out. So that's the main deck. It's a clean 41. You could probably honestly cut this and go down to 40. Um, I would never cut Harpy's Feather Duster because it's just that insane of a card when it is good. Um, I can think of very few times where I'm drawing this card where I'm like, damn it. Um, so even, <laughs> even going first, it's just a good card. Uh, so three rock, this card's insane. It's a link one, obviously. Uh, Nightmare Cerberus, Nightmare Phoenix. That's all the links that we're playing. It's just a solid five package. Um, these are just solid to start to get clear boards and like super simplified games. So I like to run this the extra deck as if it's a toolbox. So we're running one Tornado Dragon, one Guska, one Exiton Knight, and I'm running a Time Thief Redoer. Um, remember, I play a lot under D Shifter. And this is kind of what helps me do that. Um, so I'm not super stressed about it a lot of time. If my hand is insane, I'll make Time Thief over Baguska. And if it's mid to bad, I make Baguska. And then the new level four that just came out is the Battle and Boxer King Dempsey. This card searches out Raisin with two level fours. This did not come up for me. It came up for Alex once, but it got impermed. Um, but this card has niche applications when you open suboptimally. Uh, that being like Dr. Mad Love. Um, Panthera and the Fire Kashtira, the Rise Heart. So, is this card necessary? Probably not. Does it increase your consistency with your bad hands? Yes, it does. So, that's why I'm running it. Big guy, this card is really good. I made this once all day. Um, it was good when it was good. There's no Rise Heart in here. I thoroughly think that if you were playing Rise Heart in this deck, um, you were a a Bagoomba because that card makes no sense. Um, Alex and I were talking about it, and he's like, Well, why, you know, you could just big eye take Shinger Irla and make Rise Heart. And I'm like, Yeah, or I can just big eye take 
Shangri-Era and make a big ass Zeus. Like who cares? Um, so I think if you're running a rise heart, you're trash, but you know, <clears throat> I got third place and he got top eight. So who knows? Um, I'm playing Spriggan's Merrymaker and Gigantic over the Zodiacs. I know Zodiacs can attack directly, but in game states where you're playing against like um, sprites where they have a sprite red, you want this because you can just beat over the sprite red and you're good to go. And then obviously I am playing two Zeus's. This, your second Zeus could honestly be whatever the hell you wanted to be. It does not need to be Zeus, but I like the second Zeus for a cash. I actually liked my side deck a lot. Um, it was incredibly cracked, except when I drew multiples of a certain card. So I'm gonna show you guys the going first cards. First, the going first cards are a Tikaboo and then Eradicator. This card can, this card needs to go. Uh, I, I don't, said that in the last video. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was playing Labyrinth and I'm turns, and in Labyrinth I can turn zero this out or you know wait for your draw phase and draw phase this out and you know you cry. Um, this card's a little more fair. This card was really good in the purely matchup. Unfortunately, I drew two of it, so I couldn't even play the game. Um, but this card is insane. This is generically like. You're sighting in one or the other, sometimes both, rarely both, but it's really, really good when it's good. Um, for going first against certain decks, though, you can also side in Cosmic Cyclones. Um, this is really good for back row decks. It's also like kind of decent against purely, but I would move this to more of a going second. Um, going second too, we have Lightning Storms and then a Kaiju. So if you look at the ratios, we're running five go second, six go first which usually you want five going first cards and then reverse for your going second. But what's weird about this deck is your going first hands are just trash usually. Like you end on a rock border, which is like, ooh, so scary. Um, but if you end on rock border, border, TC Boo or Eradicator, it's almost an auto win a lot of times and that's what you want to see. Going second, you already have a lot of things like Kaiju's hand traps, Harpy's Feather Duster, stuff like that. So you just want to increase the consistency on that. Again, this Kaiju is insane. Um, Lightning Storms are just Lightning Storms. They're just the second and third copy of Harpy's Feather Duster and Regeki's because some people are not respecting this as well. And the Cosmic Cyclone's just good for back row decks. Um, so now we're gonna get into the flex spots for the side deck, which is just two bell um, and then two contact. See, I have to obligatory do this because if not, uh, a Mr. Michael Murphy will kill me. This was Michael Murphy's idea. It's a good uh, card. It's a good card. <laughs> I told Alex about how good contact C was only because Michael told me and asked me what I thought about it. And I was like, oh man, you know, you're right. It's a good card. And then I told Alex about it. This man goes to Michael Murphy, asks him about the card, and then immediately puts it in his deck. Not, not after <laughs> talking to me. And this is the fifth time this has happened where uh, Alex will talk to me about something like, yeah, this card is really good. You should think about it. He runs off to little Michael. He's like, hey, Michael, what do you think about this card? And Michael's like, yeah, that's good. And then the next deck list Alex shows me, it's the fucking card I told him to play. Um, but I did With not... a big old Michael Murphy shout out too. Yeah. <laughs> so Michael Murphy, thank you for this. Um, I played this against Purely's. He was playing the IP mascarena card i didn't expect that but it did make his board pretty beatable except i drew like boop so it didn't matter uh, but this card is insane this card was also really good against cash hero shockingly um except i sh i did this after he used shangri hero um so that way it like locked him into stuff but he went yeah that's nice i'm gonna normal summon finra over this and something else i was like sure i, I guess i'm stupid <laughs> um and then bell bell is bad in the main deck I, i'm sticking with that but it's really good against decks like labyrinth um, and Labyrinth specifically, um, branded. It's not bad in the mirror, honestly. It's not bad against Cash Tier for their birth. In simplified game states, it's kind of bad to do it early, but yeah. Um, the, the like big thing in the difference from Alex and I's is I ran the Kaiju. Alex decided to run a second Talents over the Kaiju. Both, I think, are equally well. They both play into going first and, well, his play is better into going first and going second. This is strictly when I, I only play this card for going second. So he's played a more flexible card and talents is insane. But there's just too many times where like purely is a bit a big deck right now and you just have to you have to out the noir. Mm -hmm. Um the resources you don't care about as much because you can out the resources after noir fairly easily, but you have to have this for the noir. Alright, so that was the deck. Um, again it was Vanquish Soul. You guys have already seen Alex on here with Vanquish Soul once or twice. It's a very good deck. Um, I'll give shout outs and then I'll talk about the tournament report. Shout outs again to Joseph for letting me borrow the cards. He was also on Banquet Soul for a while, so I was able to bounce some ideas. Um, shout outs to Alex, of course. Alex and I have thought on this deck for a very long time. Alex um, started off doing like a poor job at where he was summoning stuff at. 
Uh, turns out through tough love, aka screaming at him that he's an idiot, he was able to get over that and now he's teaching me things about the deck that's really cool to see. Um, shout outs to Devin, shout outs to not Jay because he keeps playing sprites when he knows that's a bad deck. Jay, get off, <laughs> get off sprites. Shout outs to Michael Murphy yeah. for Contact C. Um, that's it, Michael, the rest of you, you know, the rest of your ideas kind of suck. That's why you always bubble out of nuts. Um, but anyways, it was a really good tournament. Action did really great. Round one, I played against Cash Tira. I 2-0'd that. Um, that was actually a really good game. There was a board state. He ended on like Shangri Era, uh, Rise Heart, like one or two set cards, like an Imperm and everything with a hand trap, and I was able to play around that. Um, I, I felt like a god afterwards. Round two. Oh my god, what did I play against round two? I don't know. I think I 2-0'd my round two opponent. I played against Nick with Vanquish Soul. Uh, Nick with Vanquish Soul, I 2-0'd him. I played against, oh, round two was Nicky with his anti-meta, summon fossil Dyna, uh, time, regu whatever the hell, game I one. I played against that dude twice, and it's always something like that. It's, and I'm just like, okay. It's always... <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was good game one he um he went whatever that new time card is where you get to draw two cards every turn and you get an extra normal summon he went summon fossil dino summon false uh oh, Thunder King. inspector border set crackdown and i was like yeah so he beat me in 36 seconds and i was like yeah i guess i just lose the match then um and then i got game two and game three and then round three was nick um round four Four was Exo Sister. Yeah, Exo Sister. Okay. That egg was a little scary, um, but everyone kept D shiftering me all day. Oh and I was God. like, that's nice, but I'm van a Vanquish Soul player who plays D shifter, and they would keep it in post siding. And I was like, yes, this is exactly what I wanted. Nice. Um, and then round four was against Rescue Ace. Um, he gave me the win because honestly, we were guaranteed anyway, so we just wanted to eat. Top eight, I played against Nick again with Cash Tira, 2 0 that again. Um, that game one was incredibly close. That was the hardest game of my Yu-Gi-Oh career, honestly. Um, and then top four, like we said, I played against Chase and he got it. But overall, the, the deck was really fun. This deck is so much fun to play because usually you always feel like you can do something. You rarely feel like you're just gonna auto lose. And it just feels fun to play. You're doing a lot of tagging in and tagging out. It rewards you for playing well by summoning Raisin in the certain columns, holding off um, Caesar for certain things, holding off Mad Love for certain things, Book of Mooning certain things. It just feels really good to play. Um, I'm probably not going to play it again for a little bit. I'm on to bigger and greener <laughs> fields, aka ninjas right now. Ninjas? Oh, uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a great time. Again, shout outs to Preston for, you know, hosting the team as always yeah um, and then shout outs to action for holding the tournament thank you guys so much yeah well thank you danny and uh again thanks action tcg i'm sure we'll be seeing you soon you're gonna sell this deck and go into the next one so uh let's uh let's see how many more videos we can get out of you man yeah see you guys later all right man peace